Okay, we are given the point, phi comma negative 12, and we know that point is on the terminal side of the angle theta. First, we are going to make a sketch of the angle theta. Of course, theta should be in the standard position. Next, we are going to figure out the values of all these six trig functions. Let's go ahead and get to work right here. When we're given a point, we know this is the x value and that's the y value, right? So let me label that for you guys right here. And let's just go ahead and draw the x-axis and the y-axis. We know the x value is 5, and let me just label this right here as my 5, okay? You don't have to draw the little lines. And the y value is negative 12. So I'll just put this down below here. Let's say this right here is negative 12. And we have a point, 5 comma negative 12, which is right here. Right? And for the terminal side, you know, this point is on the terminal side. That means you go from the origin and you draw a ray like this, pass through this point. And the angle theta, right here, right? It is measured from the standard position, the past the x axis, and you rotate counterclockwise. And here you have it. That's the angle theta. That's a picture for it. That's it. However, in order for us to figure this out, we are going to come up with the right triangle from this first. You see that from the origin to phi, the horizontal distance is just the x value, it's just the phi, right? So let me put this down as phi. And we also know that if you just go down right here, that's the y value, and we know that's technically negative 12 because that's down below, right? So you label this side as negative 12. And we pretty much have a right triangle already. But one more thing that we need. We also need to know the hypotenuse from here to here of this right triangle, isn't it? And in this situation, we'll label this as r, the distance from the origin to this point. And we have a formula for that. It's pretty much just the Pythagorean theorem, but we have the formula. It's just the r equals to square root of x squared plus y squared. And let's just go ahead, put everything in, and work this out. This is going to be x is 5, so we have 5 square, plus the y value is negative 12 square, and we have 5 square is 25, and then we add it with negative 12, and then square is positive 144. You take the square root for that after that. This is square root of this and that together is 169. And square root of 169, we know uh, this, is, this is going to be 13, right? Whole number 13, nice number. That means I can come here and I'll label this is 13 for the hypotenuse. And now we are ready to fill this out. And before that, if you would like, you can you know, indicate this much better. You can say the x is 5, the y is negative 12, and the r is 13, just to make this super clear. Anyways, so these are the things for to remember. In this situation, sine theta is defined as y over r, okay? Why is this? Technically, if you look at this as your reference angle, okay, this part right here, because you're talking about right triangle. Sine, it's the opposite, right? It's the opposite over the hypotenuse. And that's exactly why it is y over r. From here, it's the opposite, and the hypotenuse is 13. And by the way, r is always positive. Keep that in mind. X and Y, of course, it can be negative or positive, but R is always positive, okay? Anyways, sine theta is Y over R, which we have negative 12 over R is 13. And that's it. And then, cosine theta, well, by this kind of definition, it will be X over R, and the X is 5, R is 13. So the answer to this is just 5 over 13. And for tangent, it's what? Y over x, y over x. It's just the same as opposite over adjacent, all right? If you look at this as your reference angle. Anyways, y is negative 12 over x, which is 5. And this is pretty much it for the, uh, you know, the three famous one, sine, cosine, tangent of the angle theta. Because once you have this three done, this right here are pretty much for free. Because if you set this up correspondingly, sine theta, cosecant theta, you know the relationship of this and that is. You just flip this, right? You do the reciprocal. Cosecant theta is just, you flip that, which is 13 over negative 12. 
Of course, you can put the negative in the front, or well, on the top, doesn't matter, but let me write it down this way. Next, we have secant theta, which is just a flip of that. Secant theta is just a reciprocal of cosine theta, okay? So we'll just turn this into 13 over 5. And the last one, cotangent theta, is just the flip of the original tangent. It will be 5 over negative 12. So technically, these are the three that you have to have to remember, right? And then you also have to have to remember how you set this up. Sine, cosine, tangent, and then sine and cosecant, cosine and secant, and tangent and cotangent. Anyways, this right here is what we are looking for, and that's it.